Now we may amass this incredible amount of knowledge, but without wisdom, our knowledge is useless. We must learn how to live out what we know. Welcome to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. I'm also a managing director and partner here at One Capital Management. I'm here each and every week to help you better understand your finances and your investments because after all, your money matters. Friends, woven into the fabric of humanity, I think, is the desire for all of us, each of us, to learn and understand. Our minds, if you really think about it, sets us apart from any other species on the planet. We, as humans, we analyze, we reconceptualize, theorize, uh, discuss, and we debate everything from science to the supernatural. We build schools, institutes, and universities off of this. We're, we literally educate teachers to help us learn about the world and about life. And we are constantly seeking knowledge and wisdom. Now, knowledge is good, but what I wanna talk about today as it relates to your investments, there's a vast difference between knowledge, basically having the facts, and then wisdom, which is appropriately applying those facts to life. Now, we may amass this incredible amount of knowledge, but without wisdom, our knowledge is useless. We must learn how to live out what we know. We are thrown facts and opinions and figures at us every day. Social media, news outlets, they're feeding it to us in 140 characters or less every day. And we have to, almost by second by second, we have to disseminate all of this information. And that's what this week's episode is about, knowledge and wisdom when it comes to your money. But before we dive in here, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, let's get into it. This topic today brings up something and it reminds me of the wisest man in the world. You know who that is? Now, many of you probably debate this, which by the way is the irony <laughs> of this week's episode, right? But to me, the wisest person that's ever lived is Solomon. Now, other than him being a king and literally the richest man that's ever lived, something I'll bring up here in a second. I mean, look, if you think about Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates or maybe Elon Musk, he trumped all of those guys in comparison. And, and then again, other than him being a king, he wrote some of the biggest books in the Bible, everything from Proverbs to Ecclesiastes to Song of Songs. And in these books, he gave us some practical insights and guidelines for life. And by life, I mean everything that encompasses our life. Now, I'm not here necessarily to preach to you today, okay? I realize no human being is the same, but at its core, the Bible has some very important lessons we can all glean from, no matter what you believe. But the first of these three volumes I mentioned that Solomon passes on his practical advice in the form of Proverbs. And many of us, by the way, we, we quote these daily without even realizing that they come from the book of Proverbs. A proverb, by the way, is a short, concise sentence that conveys moral truth. So the book of Proverbs that Solomon wrote is a collection of these wise statements. The main theme of Proverbs, if you look at it, as we all might expect, is the nature of true wisdom. He then goes on to give essentially hundreds of practical examples of how to live according to that wisdom. Proverbs covers a wide range of topics, including youth and discipline, family life, self-control, and essentially resisting temptations. It talks about business matters, words and the tongue and how we use what we say. It talks about marriage, uh, seeking true wealth. We'll talk about that, Immor immorality and immortality. And of course, wisdom. These are, they're put together in short poems, usually in, in a couplet form. They, they contain a mixture of, of common sense and then timely warnings. Now, why am I bringing this up to you today? I think now more than ever, when we look at the difference between facts and opinions in disseminating the truth, which we are hit with again every day in the media outlets of all forms, that could be a whole other show, by the way, in and of itself. But when it comes to your money, understanding the context in which your financial planning, your wealth management, okay, your investing life is important. And I think now more than ever with last week's election, and the midterms happening and heading into the, the end of 2022 and all the things that have happened this year that we've been talking about here on the Make Your Money Matter show, it's really important to bring this up. And before we start looking to our politicians for answers, we might wanna start looking within and make sure that we design what we need 
for us to secure ourselves. There was a parable in the Bible, in fact, that talks about teaching a man to fish versus giving them a fish. Understanding ways to use our knowledge that we have as wisdom matters for your money, for your life, and everywhere else. And that's what I always talk about on the show. And we believe here at One Capital Management heavily for all of our clients that we're blessed to be able to serve is to be able to really find that advisor. It may not be us, but find someone to help you through and maintain all the stress levels you might have right now, especially around your money, especially in a year like this. And understanding what true wisdom is around the context, again, of your planning for your retirement or your investment portfolio. By the way, if you think about it on that note, and those who watch and listen to the Make Your Money Matter show, I talk about this a lot. It's actually in Proverbs. Proverbs 15.22 states, plans go wrong for lack of advice, but with many advisors, it brings success. So understanding wisdom and where this counsel comes from is important. And what I'm trying to say is the facts and opinions that matter for what you are bringing to the table when it comes to the context of your money, which I'm gonna, again, bring up a lot in this episode because it matters when you're looking at things from investing to, again, overall planning and really just in life. And for many watching or, or listening to the show right now, when you're looking at the world of investing or planning, you're almost thinking, why would I even bother? It's just a game that I don't wanna play. <laughs> I'm getting fed all of this information that the world is ending or there's so much corruption or, or, or this, that, and the other. And this is why I wanna talk about wisdom and truth. Understanding what your context of that is, is important. Because one of the biggest detriments I think that anyone can have, especially as a younger person, starting their career, maybe you're in your 20s or 30s, is inaction. It has been said the cost of inaction is almost always greater than the cost of a mistake. It reminds me, I think, of the Teddy Roosevelt quote, which I always love, a man who never makes a mistake is a man who's never done anything. Solomon, again, the wisest man in my world, actually wrote about this in his book of Ecclesiastes. He said, because life has no guarantees, we have to be prepared. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, that's where planning comes in. We can't, and no one can, guarantee a rate of return. And by the way, if anyone does, please run. <laughs> but investing does have risks. You, you can't guarantee if you plan for something, it's gonna play out exactly how you planned it, but you have a plan to back up. I'm managing that risk and what a risk manager really does is really what a portfolio manager does. We are risk managers. And essentially, again, you know, I am in a discovery meeting with a client, let's say, and we have a client, a prospective client here at One Capital Management. We'll go through a lot of quantitative data with them, understanding their income, maybe their outflow with their spending each month or each year, their debts, their assets. We'll talk about ages, their career, and a lot of numerical data we'll talk about. But we'll also talk about, which is equally as important, is the qualitative data their interests, the relationships they have, their hobbies, and ultimately their values, because those are as important to know about a client than the numerical data. And if your advisor isn't looking at that or asking those questions, make sure you find someone that does, because those are equally as important as, again, your numerical or your quantitative data, the numbers, and everyone wants to make, you know, you feel like you have to understand the market. Yes, there's a good education around that when you talk with your advisor, but there's also something you need to understand and that meeting with an advisor is to help you guide you through all these waters, navigating a, you know, between, again, these facts and these opinions and truths that are out there because there's plenty of them. And depending on who you wanna follow, whether it's on social media or an economist you wanna follow, or maybe it's your neighbor or some water cooler conversation you're having at work, right? Remember that all information that you take in each day, your mind and your body relate to that information. It disseminates in its own way, basically with its own filter. So letting that out and seeking counsel helps you disseminate what is right to you for your planning and for your investing. And I'll get off that for a second. Now, referring back to Ecclesiastes, one of the books in the Bible I was speaking about, many people understand Ecclesiastes to be kind of the Debbie Downer book about how life is meaningless. And anyone who's read this book or understands knows what I'm talking about. And it's, and that's the last chapter of it, not the entirety of the book. But if you really look through the meat of it, it wasn't a stingy, despairing attitude. I mean, it, just because life is uncertain doesn't mean we should do nothing. And I wanna share that today when it comes to investing. We need a spirit of trust and adventure facing life's risks and opportunity with enthusiasm and maybe some faith. But action is far better than inaction. For those thinking, you know, I really should invest and, and get out there, but I don't have the money to invest. Well, here's a couple of steps to start. One, print out your bank statement from last month. Two, highlight every single expense that was a, let's call it a categorized as a want. Then three, calculate 
the total amount you spent on all of those wants. And then four, next month, reduce your wants by 25%, then increase your investments by 25%, and then go to bed knowing your money will be working for you while you sleep. Boom, there, done. Okay, obviously easier said than done, but try it, it can't hurt. Now I've had a lot of conversations with some prospective clients lately around, you know, I don't know if we have enough money to invest. I'm not sure where we're at with that. Obviously the market's tumultuous. I don't know if I want to. And I've always told clients this, it's not necessarily the amount of money that matters so much as it is the intent to want to grow within your investing world. Find that counsel, find that advisor to be able to build that plan that you want to build. Shying away from it isn't the answer. And I know that's the easy one because it's uncomfortable, but you have to be, and I'll mention this later, comfortable in the uncomfortable to be successful in your life. You ask anyone who's 10, 20, or 30 years older than you are right now, whatever age you are, if you bring up the concept of money or investing or saving, they would say, man, I wish I started earlier. I've heard that for nearly 20 years as an advisor when I meet clients and we build a plan and we kind of see where they're going and they get comfortable with the process. They're like, and it's not about us. I'm not saying it's about one capital necessarily, but they're like, we met, we wish we met you 10 years earlier or 20 years earlier. And I take that not as a compliment as how it sounds. And it's, again, it's not about us. I take that more of a understanding that that's why a large part of the spirit of the Make Your Money Matter show is born off of this is we want to be out there. We don't want to be the unknown expert or the unknown experienced advisor. We want to connect with you to make sure we instill these kind of theories with you. So you don't become uh, those that you're talking to right now who might be 10, 20 or 30 years older than you, you know, live vicariously through them, but realize some of the good advice that they're sharing. And I, I wanted to share that. So, and I've dropped a couple ideas today for those who may feel they don't have enough to invest. Or again, maybe the question is, I'm not sure I'm spending so much in, in living right now. There's always a way. It's just, it just depends on if you want to put the effort towards it. Uh, that's what I really want to kind of put a bow on that. Now take some facts and figures for a second here. And I want to bring this into context since we're talking about some things out there like this. According to a recent Market Watch article, 45% of Americans making over $100,000 say they live paycheck to paycheck. 47% of those that are making between 150,000 and 200,000, and then 28% of those over 200,000 again are living paycheck to paycheck. Basically, making bank doesn't necessarily mean you have money in the bank. That's kind of a key takeaway there. I also say that I've had this comment lately that the term paycheck to paycheck really isn't a little outdated, Brad. It's more like direct deposit to direct deposit, but I'll, I'll get it. Look, the, the story behind this and my sharing those facts is you want to learn to manage the money you have today so you can effectively manage it later. The steps you're going to do right now to put into today's world for you, you know, right now will impact you later. In fact, one of the early episodes we talked about was the ripple effects that happen with one seemingly innocuous decision you might make today. And it's probably worth watching this episode because it's like, you know what? I do want to dip my toe into understanding a question of how much I should live on or how much I should save for short-term or mid-term or long-term goals. I should reach out to someone to help me with that. And, and that's where advice comes in. And since I'm talking about that, another episode uh, you should definitely check out is the Psychology of Money episode. We'll throw a link up here if you wanna check it out. But the book I refer to in that episode um, quotes the phrase, saving money is the gap between your ego and your income and wealth is what you don't see. For you young people out there right now, that is important. Said differently, stack your money and act broke have more than you show and speak less than you know. I don't know how else plainly to see it, but it's a really great thing to take away as you think about money now and in the future. Even if, by the way, this isn't just for the young folk, right? <laughs> young folk, I sound like an old guy. Even if you are in your 60s or 70s or 80s, it's really important to know that what you have going out matters just as much as your earning in say your portfolio or what's coming in. So managing your income and your outflow has a lot to do with how much you can save where your risks are. And when it comes to investing and making sure you don't get caught up in the trap of keeping up with the Joneses. And when it comes to ego, let's just put this one on the table. In nearly 20 years of being a financial and investment advisor for clients, I've noticed a few things. Someone who makes $20,000 looks at a person making $50,000 as balling out, as the young kids say. Someone who makes $50,000 a year looks at someone who makes $100,000 a year as balling out. Someone who makes $100,000 a year looks at a person making $500,000 a year and balling out. You can see where I'm going with this. There will always be someone ahead of you. Just do you. Said differently, everything in 2022 is going up with inflation. You know where one place you can stay for free? Your lane. 
Focus on you. Don't look the other lane or over because God gave you the talents for you that are different than them. Period. End of story. So start today and don't look over your shoulder. Make sure you manage all the things that come into your finances, not your neighbor's finances, not your buddy's finances, not your sisters, your brothers, your husbands, anyone else's. I mean, the husband and wife should be together, but I'm going to say this many, many times today, but the context around your planning has very little to do, believe it or not, with your colleagues planning or your neighbors or even your family members. Your specific and unique planning has to do with you, your immediate family, your spouse, maybe your kids, and understanding how Many topics out there that get discussed, things like saving, investing, and debts, things like buying a car or buying a house or even credit card debts, managing cash flow, these all come into play when it comes to building a retirement plan for you and specifically for you. And I think there is a good bridge from the knowledge you may have from your upbringing, but the wisdom to actually apply it matters because the application of it is going to be somewhat different than the knowledge from the person to which you received it. And I talk about this a lot, again, on that behavioral uh, financial episode I, I brought up, and this actually came a lot from the book, is that there's really two forms. There's the God-given, the no different than the color of our eyes, and then there's the circumstantial. And I think it has a lot to do with like the nurture nature conversation, but when it comes to your money, the circumstantial, whether you live through good times or bad times or grew up with money or without money, they play on our emotions as we get older, with or without money. And so it really makes it important. It says that the knowledge that you learned from those experiences, you need to now apply them into the wisdom to grow your money, keep your money, or ultimately set the goals that you want with your money first, and then build the plan around this. And we are seeing a lot going on politically, you know, geopolitically in our markets, again, with our election last week and everything from, by the way, this year, everything from interest rates to inflation rates, all this being discussed, a lot of facts, a lot of figures are all going to come here and gonna, we're going to see them every month. And we have to disseminate those facts and figures and make sure it works for what your risk tolerance is, what your planning is, and everything from your time frame to your overall objectives and goals. And if you're asking right now, watching or listening, what are my goals and objectives? I don't even know. This guy Brad's talking about this. I don't know what my goals and objectives are. That's where a discovery meeting with a good credentialed and experienced advisor who will sit down with you, they will help you build that. It's, it's amazing, actually, when you can create this roadmap for yourself. I, I can't tell you how joyous it is each and every week when we build what we call here at One Capital Management our black book, which is a wealth forecast for a potential client. And we build that forecast for them, not for the next person or the person before them, for them. Seeing the joy that comes from understanding that, that these are their numbers and potentially your numbers I'm talking to you right now, looking at this, it makes all the world a difference. It's taking all that noise, and I'm going to call it that for right now because that's what it is. All that noise that's coming from media outlets, everything against. There might be facts and mostly opinions. All that data, again, everything from macroeconomics or political or geopolitical views, all that stuff that's out there, bringing it down to, into a even a two-page format, very simple, that puts into context your numbers, your goals, your objectives, your values, your interests, all of that comes into play. And then seeing it all of a sudden, the light bulb clicks. I see it each and every week with our clients. And lastly today, never be so busy comparing what you have that you forget how fortunate you are to have it. Just take a look at the world around us today. We need to be fortunate and take good stewardship right now. Something actually Solomon talks about when it comes to wisdom, take good stewardship and ownership and believe that plan can be put in place and find that counsel, that person to help you do it. Listening to the last person that says something on some social media influencer account may not be the right approach. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just saying, look at it. And knowing what to do with your money is vital to the success of your overall financial life. And your success, believe it or not, depends on the risks you take. Your survival in life in general, let alone in the financial world, your survival depends on the risks you avoid. If your success depends on the risks you take and your survival depends on the risks you avoid, understanding your risk is pretty important, wouldn't you say? Something to think about. Before we end today, I wanted to share with you 10 things I've learned in my years of being a financial advisor, but also just a human being like you. And this list is one that I've developed over time. And I think even if you can grasp a couple of these, it can really help change your mindset around the concept of money. First and foremost, number one, money is attracted to people who work, who people who work for it and work hard. Two, you have more opportunities today than anyone in history. Think about that. 
Three, work ethic will outperform natural ability throughout a career. I am sitting here in front of you today, not necessarily the most capable, but I am able and I'm willing. So my work ethic will always outperform, and I think yours will too, natural ability throughout a career. Number four, this is a little controversial, but hear me out. I've done a lot of research for a lot of years. CEOs do more for this country than politicians, and it's not even close. Number five, don't keep up with the Joneses. They're likely more worse off than what is presented. Just saying. Number six, it is your responsibility, as it is mine, to be as fit, healthy, and financially secure for yourself as possible for your family. Not next door, not your community, for you first. Start there first. Number seven, simple one. Those who complain the most accomplish the least. I learned that from my grandfather. Number eight, be comfortable in the uncomfortable. I said this earlier in the show, and I, it's, it's a mantra I've kind of lived by, is learn to be comfortable in what most people find uncomfortable. Number nine, those who think they need, say, $10 million to be happy will never be happy, ever. Happiness is a choice, not a number. And number 10, and this is a big one, gaining wealth is a habit. The most successful investors I've seen, clients I've worked with, or just studying the market for nearly two decades, the ability to not only gain wealth, but keep it is a habit, make it habitual. Now I gave you some of my 10 wisdom or knowledge facts or anecdotes for today. And I wanna share some that I've actually leaned on uh, for my career and I really like them and some knowledge and wisdom from others. The first one is from John D. Rockefeller. If your only goal is to become rich, you will never achieve it. And I've always loved that. Purpose matters most, money then follows. The second one was written by a guy named George Clayson who wrote The Richest Man in Babylon. And I love this quote, I always, it always made sense to me. Money is plentiful for those who understand the simple laws which govern its acquisition. The laws I kind of stated, that's where some of mine came from, where it's work hard, be ethical, you know, and, and, and again, work ethic will always went out of natural abilities. And the last one, this is kind of for you budget items out there and for the debt seers. The reason why we have stress in this life sometimes because of our debt and our money has a lot to do with what Thomas Jefferson said many, many years ago. Never spend money before you have it. I mean, it's pretty simple. I get asked a lot of times for it. Now, I'm not saying that's for everybody. And that's not a, you know, a statement that you have to, you know, everyone needs to be there or, or, or you're screwed. I'm just saying like, it's a really good principle to uh, share when you are able to manage your debt, get out of debt, and then make sure you don't get back into debt. Now, understanding what knowledge is and then putting it to use with wisdom, the wisdom that comes again with counsel, you want to seek that counsel, find that person you want to build trust and find that fiduciary advisor, that credential advisor, that experienced advisor, who's there for you to help you combine the knowledge that you might have and where you're going with it, with the wisdom of someone who's been there, seen it. Combine those two things, it's a very powerful thing. Okay, it's time to answer your questions. Now, if you have a question or topic you'd like me to discuss here on the show, you can leave a comment or question in the comment section, or if it's something you wanna talk more one-on-one, just go to the about page on this channel and you can send us an email. We'll always keep the questions I read here anonymous. I never have to worry about your name being shared, but we would love to hear from you. Today's question I actually think was applicable to the knowledge and wisdom where the person was saying, I've been studying the markets, I've saved up some money and I'd like to invest. Is now a good time? My short answer is yes, but let me expand a little bit. Obviously there's context to be gleaned here in the sense of understanding uh, this person's or as you're watching or listening right now, you know, making sure you have uh, emergency funds set aside three to six months typically of your overhead. So if you got a $5,000 a month overhead, have somewhere between 15 and $30,000 of cash. These are some good parameters. Uh, make sure you're looking at your long-term objectives too. You should be saving somewhere between 10 and 15% into your 401k or IRA of the income you're receiving. And if those are kind of taking pace right now and, and those are happening, then, then the focus of investing, my short answer is yes, because again, I've said this so many times, I know for many watching every week, this might be a bore, forgive me, but it's not about timing the market, it's time in the market. You know, one of the best quotes from Alexander Graham Bell was, uh, the only difference between success and failure is taking action. We can have the same conversation a month from now, six months from now, a year from now. And if we don't actually dip our toes in, then we're just sitting on the sidelines. So it, it's a hard one. I know many people struggle with it. I think it's really kind of a knowledge and wisdom thing here, where it's like the knowledge of the market and, and seeing things and maybe getting bogged down by data or, or even facts right now with what's going on this year with the wisdom of 
someone like myself or anyone else in your life talking to you about, well, I know I should be investing, I gotta get started. And those are kind of clashing. I understand the question, that's why I wanted to share it today in the sense of, I think, I think the answer is get it going. One thing I might add to maybe start it is do something called dollar cost averaging. You know, if you got $10,000 to invest, $100,000, a million dollars, it doesn't really matter. The, the idea is, is to start investing. And if you dollar cost average it in, you're able to smooth out volatility, uh, stage your, your, you know, you're dipping your toes in, if you will, over the next six months, a year, maybe it's 500 bucks a month, a thousand bucks a month, don't do all of it. You can do some dollar cost averaging. A lot of studies on that um, have shown to, to prove out well. And so it's just an option you can do and, and uh, to kind of stage your way into the market. So um, that's how I'd answer that question. Uh, I think it's a good one, so thank you. Uh, again, if you have a question or comment, you'd like me to read here, leave it in the comments section. Or again, you can email us in the about page on our channel. Before we go today, if you found anything helpful today and wanna learn more about myself or any one of our advisors here at One Capital, you can visit our website at onecapital.com. You can scan the QR code on the screen with your smartphone to get you there. You can also call or text us. We want to help. There's no pressure here. We don't treat people like a number. In fact, we value our relationships. It's the lifeblood of what we do as a wealth management firm. So click, call, or text us today. And if you're not following us on social media, you should be. You can follow us at Make Your Money Matter. We're sharing great information on all of our social media platforms. And as I often say every week, if you like the show, share with someone you like. But if you don't like the show, maybe share with someone you don't like. But until next time, always remember, make your money matter.